Okay, we did, um, we studied, like, why when you interweave, uh, phone books, you can't tear them apart. Yeah, and really what, it, what it's coming down to is, you see in, like, Mythbusters where they, they interweave every single page, but instead of doing that, we interweaved, um, so what we did is, we were going to investigate why when you weave more and more pages together, meaning that there are less pages in between each interleaving, that's the technical term for it, I looked it up. Um, so like, um, why the more interleavings are, the harder it is to pull apart. And so we hypothesized that the more interleavings you have, with, meaning the more pages, in, the less pages in between each interleaving, why, that, that it would be harder to pull apart because the friction would be greater. What, you, you don't have questions now. I don't know what interleaving means. It's what do you mean weave together? This, I don't get it. This is interleaving. See how my fingers are going like that? I mean, like yeah. when you take that 100 is, pages of phone book and you put on top of the other 100 pages of phone book of another phone book and you keep doing that. Yeah, so. Okay. This is, see? Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I drew this. <laughs> and we didn't use chains, we used ropes, but I guess yeah, that would be more extreme. I, Two uh, chains. Yeah, so this is our setup. And we were both pulling at different ends, yeah. It was on the ground. Mm -hmm. It was on the ground, meaning that the bottom was flat. Yeah, we were doing it at 180, 180 degrees. And oh, that was to find the normal force. Yeah, and then... So, we did two experiments, and one was to find the normal force, and one was to find um, the coefficient of friction of the phone book paper, and this was to find the coefficient of static friction of the phone book paper. Yeah. So we just had two pieces of the paper, and then a weight on them, and then we pulled them apart. Um, and then we calculated the coefficient of friction. Well, we, ju we just pulled the one on top apart, because if you pull the one on bottom, then the one on bottom will be feeling two, well, would be feeling friction on two places from the table and from the other piece of paper. Okay, so then um, we got our data from, uh, from the paper pulling to find the coefficient. We got that the max uh, force of static friction was 0.561 newtons, meaning, and, Meaning that the uh, that the normal force would be 1.1772 because it's equal to mg. So we took the mass that we had on top there. We had a 120 gram mass. Multiply that by 9.81 after we put it in kilograms. And then so we took that we took the uh, force of static friction divided it by the normal force, and that's the coefficient that we got about 0.47 for uh, static friction. According to my uh, unpublished uh, results, I, I'll get to publishing pretty soon, that last digit is a 4. I'm surprised that you got a 2 for that one. Wait, where? Uh, in the point four seven six five five four five three six. I've got those, but th my last digit is a 4. Wait, this was up here? No. In the, 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 in, in the coefficient no, of static friction. Was, are you using these numbers? No, I was using a different uh, normal force, but it shouldn't depend on normal force, right? Our, I'm, our, uh, this was uh, this is what I was telling you yesterday. Maybe how our static friction. Okay. Maybe our uh, <laughs> static, our maximum static friction that we measured on our graph was different than this. Or maybe you don't have any digits out there. What are you talking, what are you talking I'm just dissing you. You don't have that too. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> that doesn't matter. So <coughs> then, sig figs. We, we, we have limited time. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. When he has a question. That doesn't count. Okay, Say so then, after pulling the books apart, this is this is the book pulling to find the normal force. We had, in between each central leaving, we started with 100 pages between each central leaving, and there were two 1,000 page phone books that we interleaved together, meaning that there are 10 interleavings. With 50 pages in between each central leaving, that's 20. With 25, that's, do that in your head. With 10, that's 100. <laughs> and so the problem with the problem with um, the four centers is that they had a cap of it said 50, but they really capped around 65. But you can see right here, 75. you can see right, no, it, 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 you can see right here that <laughs> in our graphs. I will show you later. They like if you met the points together, it would be higher than what that is. And this is correct. This is correct. I feel like this should be more around like. 80, and this one should definitely be more around 100 newtons for the maximum force of static friction. And um, doing that, we took what our coefficient was, and we calculated the normal force. But again, because of the error on here, because the force sensor isn't perfect, it only has a limit, it's capped out, 
this normal force, I feel like, especially for these bottom two, should be greater than what it is, probably closer to the 200s. This is my slide. Okay. Um, <laughs> so this is, our, this is where we got um, our static friction that we were using in those equations. And we took the, um, the peak of the graph, because that's where the pages started to pull apart, so that's where it became static friction anymore. And um, so, oh, but this is for calculating. So, back to calculating the coefficient of static friction. This is the graph that we used for that. That one. And this is for 100 pages in between the asymptote leaving. We took up there is the uh, normal force, and in between we set the time for 73 seconds just so we would have enough time just in case. Because the first time we did this, when well, we did it with t 10 newtons as the cap on the force sensor which made it way wrong. We got, um, it, it took a long time to pull apart, and it should take more time with each more interleaving, it looks like it. But then, right here, we had an error with the 25 pages. It should be, have the longest, or it should have a longer time to pull apart than the 100 pages between each interleaving and the 50 pages between each interleaving. So something went wrong, but we did it like three times beforehand. We just messed up with the force sensor each time. So. Yeah, but the time down here was correct each time. So something went wrong there, but we ran out of time because we goofed. And this is between each, um, 10 pages between each interleaving. It started to tear. The rope right here tore through the book. Actually, that's when it started to tear, and my dad stopped holding it. And then right here, the book, the rope completely tore through the book, so we said, okay, we physically as humans cannot pull it anymore without it ripping. So, or the way we had it set it up. So. Ran out of a phone book, of course, and that's why we stopped at 10 pages between since we're leaving. And oh, I okay, so I graphed um, the force that we measured on each graph versus the pages between each since we're leaving, and you can see, you can see pretty much that the trend is downward. So um, as the number of pages between each one increases, the force you need to pull them apart um, decreases. And that, that's a funny way of saying that the less interleaving is the less force you need. And so, source of error, not all the pages have the same coefficient of static friction because the normal force is different from each page, given that the angle of the pages varies from 90 to 180 degrees. The minimum force needed was not used necessarily. We could have pulled it harder than what was needed. The force sensor wasn't exactly accurate because it capped out, and the masses, the mass measurement wasn't exactly accurate as either. And so we took, um, we did error analysis on the coefficient of static friction. We got about 42% error, which isn't bad, I feel like, for how messy this was. And in conclusion, uh, here, I'll just read this really fast because we don't have much time. We proved, okay, done. <laughs> say thank you. You have to say thank, thank you. you. Okay, so conclusion, there you, go. We, um, you know, we should get a minute more because you were talking to us for like a minute and a half. Sure. So. Anyway, so in conclusion, let's go back. How do I... In conclusion, we proved that our hypothesis was correct, as we can see in the graph that Hillary made with minimum force versus um, the pages graph. The force needed decreases the number of pages between each weave increase, which means as the interleavings decrease, then minimum force decreases as well. We didn't really like prove this um, or like find this out with numbers. We, we more like this is just talked about it because this is a really new thing in physics for them. Like papers are just being published about yeah, why the, this the, happens. There's a paper that was published in August. And it wasn't finished, like being edited and adding on stuff until December of this year. And so, um, so like Hillary said, be, because it's relatively new from the phenomenon, we have a lot of speculation that we can necessarily prove. And so, the normal force. I'm just going to read through this. Normal force on the pages in the middle increases the number of interleavings increases. When you sort of like think of like a Chinese finger cuff, you like it's like this. You pull it, and then it gets harder. You can't pull it apart because there are gaps originally. In the, uh, in the, um, there are gaps originally in the uh, paper. Now we go back. <laughs> I gotta read this. And so there, there's um, a larger number of interleavings. We found that the book was at like a thicker angle at rest. Like it wasn't like this flat 180 degrees, where if you made a triangle, it would be like this. It went up like this in a way because the bottom was flat. And so we found that. You know, the bigger the original gaps or the bigger the starting initial at rest angle, because they're all going to go towards 180 when you pull it, the more you need to, the more force you need to apply 
to try and rip apart the books. And I don't know how that's exactly connected in terms of like numbers, but that's something that I definitely noticed. And also, the, the normal force in the middle, with each interleaving, the increase of interleaving, the normal force in the middle, it's, it, the books are, the pages are squished more and more the more interleavings you have. And we couldn't really calculate that either with numbers necessarily the way we wanted to, but it's just, again, to give the Chinese cup hold. Instead of having it like this, when you pull, it's not as much force being pulled down on here. When you go like this, it's like being squished all like that, and so there's just more force right in the middle. And so I was talking about an angle, and that was showing that there's like a bigger difference in the angle. And so also, um, one page feels the force of static friction on two sides since it's um, since it's obviously touching two pieces of paper. Is this laid like that? So um, the the static or the friction is just bigger. There there should page. yeah there should be a factor of two for each individual page, which should make it with each interleaving a huge increase in the normal force. But our data taken was off. This is a speculation that I know is correct. And then the last one said something about. Um, it was just. There's something. The last one said that, um, <laughs> you know, we also noticed that the time, like I said, the time, it was greater time, to, no matter if you increase the, the when, you, when you increase the, the force, the interleavings, and you, and you have more force applied, the time also increased instead of it being like, oh, well, if you pull it for longer, even with the same amount of force, it'll just take longer with more interleavings, it was also an increase in um, the force needed and an increase in time, and I thought that that was really interesting. Thank you. Okay, now that you're not being timed, I still don't get what interleaving is. It's like, so. Um, do you have a book? It's like, one on top of another, like that. And pretend there are two different spines on here. Good. Wait, so like, I'm still really confused. Like, so when you have two, are you talking about two phone books or one phone two book? Two phone books, up of 1,000 pages each. And you, and you like, full, and you like, yeah. like, like, you know, when you're shuffling cards, like you do that with them. Is that what you're saying? You go, yeah. You go one, two, three, four, five, oh. and then. You try and you try to pull them apart. Yeah, and more interleaving. I thought you were trying to rip a phone book in half. That makes so much more sense. No. Okay. Another question? <laughs> yeah. Wait. So what was the, I was, what was the phenomenon that you said was being? Um, they just can't, they just couldn't figure out, like, why it's so hard to pull them apart, because, like, there's, like, noticeably there's no, you, it's kind of hard to tell why the normal force would be increasing, and then the, um, the, mass the coefficient increase. of friction can't increase, so they couldn't really figure out why, um, like, what was changing in the system just because of the interweavings. Yeah, and our speculation is just that there are more things that are having friction and acting upon it the more interleavings you have, because, like I said, each page is being that you know is experiencing um, that's being interleaved experiences friction on the top and the bottom. And so, if you have four interleavings, you have like eight spots experiencing experiencing static friction. Where if you have like a hundred interleavings, it just increases a huge amount. And our graphs, you know, the data was a little off, but that's stuff that we can speculate. That I feel like is definitely correct. And yeah, what what else did you said? You said something. I noticed something else. Oh yeah. Also, like you can see here, the reason people know that, like one of the countless misconceptions is that it's not the pages like having them interleave doesn't add mass in some way. It's the same amount of mass because you can see right there there is no normal force. Like the there is no mg per se, or I mean there is, but like not acting on the pages because the pages are going this way now instead of going up and down, they're going side to side because the books are hung from a vertical uh, point. And that's where mo nowadays most of the people are doing the experiments in a vertical position just to simply disprove the point in part this way. But that's something that like we would have to, I would have had to, like, had to like, it would have been really hard to do that for us. We wouldn't, the angle wouldn't have been perfect and so we did it in a simpler way. We didn't have a lot of materials so this is as much as we could do. I wonder if um, <clears throat> better results could have been gotten, like within the limits of the equipment, if you'd just used, you know, notebook paper or something, and just 
10 sheets or 50 sheets or something rather than going uh, to a full blown I think the problem trucks pull them apart. I think the problem with that is that we were still able to pull it apart. And um, as the force center showed, there was, it was just, it didn't seem like with the, the cap on the force sensor, it just seemed not quite right. And so I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like being with more pages, it was easier to speculate as to why because you could physically see with the more pages the effect instead of with the notebook where the numbers could be off and your speculation could be off. I thought well, that having speculation that's correct and numbers that might be a little skewed but being able to clarify it with logic was made more sense. One of the tools of a physicist is the ability to see a complicated system simpler and test it simpler. So you take this complicated thing that you can't test because you were above the limits of the force sensor on pretty much every test. So you take that and you break it down, like maybe just 500 sheets of the phone book or something. So next time, uh, consider that kind of an approach because you can, you can chop off part of the problem and just say, what can we understand about it? Because otherwise it turns into just speculation, as you were saying, right? Which isn't yeah. science. I thought it was kind of cool. But speculation is fun, absolutely. Cool. Thanks, guys.